All right, so let's dive right into another wallet finds. Thanks for joining me on another video, everyone. I love currency, you love currency. So let's kind of look through some stuff, see if I find anything cool. And uh, I love all the stuff that everybody's been emailing me and sending me uh, as far as their finds, so keep that up. And um, since I've repetitively forgotten it, <clears throat> I am going to make sure I post in this description 100% um, any winners from, from anything that I've given away that have not claimed prizes, if they go on claim for like another week or two, then I'll go ahead and just put them right back up and we'll do another contest. But let's get right to it. So let's go through the bills I have just in my wallet. Um, there is a kind of bigger bill than normal in here, but nevertheless, we'll go through it. So as we know, different parts of the bill, let's do like a little recap so we kind of know what we're uh, talking about here. And normally I would have things magnified, but this is going to be more of just a general search through. So disregard the fact that I don't have my scope up. That'll be in the next video. So things we're going to look at is essentially, well, let's say for this $10 bill, because everything's a little bit different. You know, if we look at a hundred, a $5 bill, so on and so forth, the layout of the bills are obviously different. We all know that. But also a few things that are uh, elements of the bill are a little different. So, for example, uh, the locations of the serial numbers would be different on some bills. For instance, if you go to a $1 bill, it's obviously going to have different places that the serial numbers are annotated. So uh, that's not an error, obviously, but just something to keep in mind that you're looking for slightly different versions of these variety and errors on each bill. So let's start off with the one that was on the top. Bam. All right. So first things I look for, as you know, if you watch any of my videos, is I first always look at the serial numbers, see if they match up. I also look at just kind of the general layout of the bill and, of course, the condition. The condition is not the end-all to be-all deciding factor on keeping things. Nevertheless, it's something to keep in mind because it would deteriorate the value or, you know, enhancement to the value, the face value of the bill, if the condition of it is not that great. So on this $10 bill, we look at a couple different things. For instance, we already can see that the bill has been folded. We can look at both the reverse and the obverse of the bill. And essentially, everything seems to be pretty much correct. So uh, when we look at these things, we have the Treasury of the United States signature here, the secretary here. Um, of course, on a $10 bill for this series, um, which on this bill is going to be shown right here in this little corner. Let me use my other hand. Above this 10 is going to give you the series uh, year. This is a 2013, hence the differences in uh, the more modernization of this bill. For instance, uh, counterfeiting stuff that's anti-counterfeiting measures are implemented into the 2013 bill that were different than previous bills. So that's going to be a few inlaid aspects. Um, for instance, this 10 here, the gold, the kind of gold sheen to it uh, due to the threading color as well as, uh, as uh, the Statue of Liberties torch here. So also re-represented over here behind everything in the background. Of course, you see people hold stuff to light. Um, that's also a way of checking bills in general. It's a very general way of doing it. And now if you notice at stores, they're getting a, uh, the infrared reader that's going to be able to kind of determine the bill almost instantly if it's fake. Um, although there is counterfeits out there that are very good. This bill's pretty tore up um, as far as condition is concerned. And everything seems to be in place. So we're going to kind of move on from that one. Another thing that I do, uh, of course, I look at the serial numbers, like I said, but I also try to check to make sure that they are matching. That's an oddity, but if you're part of our Facebook group, that you know there's a couple members that have posted mismatched serial numbers, which is a wonderful error, um, and usually brings a high premium to the face value. Uh, I've seen 20s and 100s is the only two, personally, that I've seen with mismatched, although, of course, on Google, but in person and I know at least the hundred dollar bill sold for like over ten times the face value it's a pretty cool bill this five dollar bill right here is from 2013 when they reprinted a couple different things um, or not reprinted but printed new bills and nevertheless changed some things I like this as far as the actual um, design on the bill is probably one of my favorite five dollar bills just as far as the the use of Lincoln's graphic here as well as the eagle here the seal in the background it's definitely one of my favorite layouts. When we look at the serial number, we can see that it's nothing fancy, uh, if you want to call it that, and nothing collectible, really. The bill's not miscut. There's no foldovers. We don't see any lack of ink or anything like that, or over-inking, for that matter. 
everything seems in place. Now I'll kind of shoot through these ones since I have kind of a lot of them and I don't want to bore you with a long, long, long video just jabbering on about ones. Um, so let's kind of look at it. So now I got the camera to focus a little nicer, we're going to move right along. So hopefully you can see that a little bit better now that we're in minute like three of this video, so sorry about that. But nevertheless, like I said, uh, the serial number is not really collectible, although this is a very clean $1 bill. It has been folded, you can see, but probably lot, not long enough to make the indention of the fold there overly, you know, bad on the bill. Nothing really jumps out as far as uh, anything crazy. With bills, of course, you can look at them under a scope and really delve deep into it, but a lot of the ones that I've seen sell for any premium are going to be the ones that have like an overtly obvious uh, error or variety with them. So if you really are in it for resale value, then keep that in mind. Like I said, always consider condition. For instance, this one here you can tell was wet. Uh, you, you can't, but I can smell it that it definitely was uh, smells like a cigarette. So slightly, or smoke in general, who knows. Um, and just kind of Nothing really jumps out. The serial number is not collectible. Nothing to look at. Next one. Same thing. Serial numbers look fine. Uh, this is a series 2013 as well, as is all the other bills we've looked at. So they are from the same series. Uh, differences, if you look at my old videos, of course there's a bunch of versions of every bill. And uh, red seal and blue seal silver certificates are really cool. Look at Look those up. Uh, but for regular $1 bills, it, you'd have to really kind of have a collectible error going on. Um, quite a bit of over ink from something that's like an outside object. This is also 2013. You can see it's ran through probably a washer as far as the creases and how it's uh, basically kind of spider veined. The reverse of the bill is also pretty, pretty dinged up and messed up and nothing collectible. We have a $100 bill. You can see the differences in... Uh, where things are printed. Let me move that. Um, you can also see the implementation for this series, which is a 1996, didn't have all the anti-counterfeiting kind of things that the newer bills have. Usually a lot of the stuff had to do with the threading and the actual material that makes the bill itself. And uh, they just didn't have that stuff modernized at that point or as modern as it is today. Um, albeit they didn't have the technology that they have now that's used for counterfeiting bills. So moving on, I mean, it's cool. It has a lot of A's in it, but nothing collectible. It's not a broken ladder. If I would have had a one in there, it would have been. Broken ladders, as we know, are going to be, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or whatever, but can be broken up. Those are less collectible than an actual ladder where it's going either in ascending or descending order on the serial numbers. They also match up, which is good, I guess, in the sense it's not an error. Moving on. So next one. We have a little bit, well, at first I thought it might be something really popular, but nothing like a popular find, but no. Haven't seen any star notes in the last couple times I've looked through stuff either, and so I'm a little bummed out about that, but hopefully something will come up. This has got folded ridiculously and jammed in a pocket, as you can see. So this one's value obviously jumps right out. Um, all Everything's in place, though. I have a lot of questions asked to me about the seals. Uh, I would say, overall, the question generally is, oh, if it's off place, they seem slightly off place. It does go through, like, a stamping process, when, or, well, printing process, and kind of a stamp, in a sense. Um, and a little bit of degree of variation is pretty common. I would say if it's, like, way down, or, you know, the actual, uh, at the point or vector on the bill that it's actually down, if it's, if it's way off-center, then, of course, I would consider that an error. Um, but a little bit of variation is pretty common, I'd say. So nothing to really think crazy about. This is cool. I, I mean, if it was all zeros, I would definitely keep it for being a low serial number. Uh, otherwise, like, actually, this is a perfect example. So check this out. This one's actually pretty well off. So I'm going to set this aside now that I actually look at it. Um, but look how much that seal is off in comparison to this. It's very noticeable. And uh, both of these are, well, this is a 2009 bill, but nevertheless, it's supposed to be more center than that. Um, and I've never, I mean, that's a really far off one. I like that. I'm going to set that aside. Keep moving on, though. Yeah, I mean, even this one is not as far off. I mean, 2013 is printed more to the left in, in general, but that other one was kind of a way further degree of uh, separation from the E there. 
Everything else seems pretty good with the, the obverse and reverse of this bill as well. So we'll kind of move on. Same here, 2013 series. Nothing nuts on this. If I would have had a two in there, that would have been, well, a two and maybe another number, a zero and a two. It would have been another broken ladder, but we don't have anything here that I see that really jumps out. It's quite worn. It's not an insufficient inking. You can tell that um, in a lot of ways, but I think the easiest for me is obviously you can determine from some, or, some other context clues on the bill. For example, you can see this is wear due to folding, not wear or a lack of wear and a lack of ink um, as a result of the actual printing process. So. That's another way to look at it. Um, on Facebook, on CoinOp, our Facebook group, somebody just posted a really cool version of a, of a uh, lack of ink on a bill, and I really like that a lot. So check that out. Nothing really there. There we go. I'm getting close to some stuff. Looks like somebody was writing on here. We can see that here, counting up 53,869, whatever that pertained to. Uh, the bill reverse and obverse is both in pretty normal condition. Going on to the next one. Nothing really crazy. Still glad that I found that off-center seal, though. I love stuff like that. This one's pretty beat up, too. It's got some sort of kid stamp, like right here, part of one. May or it's a, maybe a bank stamp. It's hard to say. Serial numbers match up. Good repetition in the beginning, but nothing collectible. The bill's pretty beat up, so we'll keep on trucking. A lot better condition bill for a 2013, because, I mean, if you think about it, 2013 was a few years back, so, I mean, these have been in circulation for a bit. But also, at the same time, I mean, it could, you know, banks have them on, you know, reserve all the time. So, I mean, there's, there's no telling if the bill started circulation in 2015, despite the fact it was printed two years earlier, three years earlier. This bill torn in the corner. See a pinhole here where somebody pinned it up at some point. Uh, no broken ladder. If we look here, though, this is a little bit interesting. So if you look at the comparison, it is a slight lack of ink here on the S as part of this serial number. It's also sitting a little low, which is odd. Um, this S here, which I don't know if you can make it out in the actual video. I'll kind of get closer. But uh, you can see that one is, this is just lightly printed, but the bill's so beat up that I'm not even going to worry about it. Last bill. Good repetition. Nothing really crazy. It's just folded up. Everything seems to be printed. Like I said, this is the more common, you know, print of this. So, like, let's compare these because these are the same year. So, kind of end the video. I mean, look at that. I'm very excited that I actually found that. It's kind of ironic that I was talking about that. But these are both 2013 bills. This is generally how it's printed. And look how far off that is. So I really like that. Hopefully you guys enjoy that off, you know, that off print there. Um, I will post it on VarietyNarrows.com to kind of look at it. And I'm going to do a little more research on the bill because I don't know as much about it right now as far as how many were in the run and all that. If you know, comment below. Um, I have a sheet I'll have to reference. But pretty cool, man. I, I've never, I don't actually don't have one that's printed that far off. I wish it was a more collectible serial number, but really, really cool. I like that a lot. Hope you do, and I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching the video. Later on.